Hi, I'm Cinda, and I'm really glad you're here. Let's talk about finding peace and wellness holistically. Let's talk about your emotions and your creative self. And let's talk about crisis and starting over in life. I'll share a little bit about my life first. No words, just photos. Hi, welcome to my first podcast episode. I'm going to jump right in here and start with a story. The car was driving at full speed down an old road in the outskirts of Tulsa, Oklahoma. The driver was only 18, a senior in high school. The speed increased 40, 50, 60, 90 miles per hour. She knew at the end of that road was a cluster of trees and if she could not stop to make the turn from that T intersection, the car would plow into those trees. It didn't matter. Life as she knew it and wanted it to be was over. A hundred miles per hour, and then boom, it hit. But wait a minute, I need to backtrack. Have you ever sat quietly in your own private thoughts and wondered, what am I doing? Why am I here? Emotions running deep and no way to express them. Every time you try to do something of significance and have a real impact, your emotions pull you back into a deep abyss of self-doubt. So you go do something meaningless or worse yet, something destructive and never get back to that motivating energy, instead just sinking into a sort of depression or anxiety or some degree of hopelessness. So you play it safe by doing something utterly unimportant because then you don't have to feel too much. You don't have to dredge up any stuff. Then you bounce around feeling down or bored or maybe even worthless. You could be at the top of your industry, but you don't like your life as it is. Who am I to think I am anyone with anything to offer, right? Does any part of this sound familiar? I have spent my life battling with depression, dark, scary, sad thoughts and emotions, and self-doubt and self-sabotage. It's an interesting admission from someone who's comfortable on a stage in front of thousands of people and has been since a very young age. But in real life, I never needed any substances because I could talk myself into assumed failure and walk away from potential success like nobody's business because I didn't think I deserved it. Thankfully, I found the courage to open that door that I kept closing and start walking the path back to me. And by the way, I will get back to the rest of that opening story in just a minute. I'm Cinda Monet, and I want to thank you for tuning in today. Although this starts out a little heavy, this podcast is going to be more about brighter, happier, solution-based ideas and experiences about human wellness, creativity, and visualization, and how you can achieve new levels of connection and happiness. So now for the rest of the story. The driver of that car was an 18 year old me. So to continue where I left off, boom, it hit like a ton of bricks. There was a house behind that group of trees. People lived in that house. If I downed a tree, trying to take down my own life, I could hurt the people in that house as well. No way was I out to hurt anyone. I just wanted my own pain to stop. I immediately found the brakes, pulled off the side of the road, feeling dejected and confused and hurt. I then sobbed my eyes out for maybe the first time in all of this. What led to that moment as a high school senior came from trauma and abuse, and it wasn't minimal, through some very impressionable years, 
and plenty of resulting self-doubt, emotional pain, and severe physical damage as well. What happened next was a long period of soul-searching, rehabilitation, and the road back, physically, mentally, and spiritually, through claiming my own deeper identity, birthright, and creativity, and using it, once again, unapologetically. I believe all human beings are, in essence, creative beings. It is as natural and important as walking, communicating, eating, sleeping, etc. Creating ideas, inventions, new ways of doing things like teaching, parenting, creating businesses to serve our families, our communities, our humanity, but mostly the creative arts. Using ourselves creatively, but not necessarily professionally, is crucial to our emotional well being. It is part of our basic nature. I know, I know, I can almost hear some of you saying, oh, not me. I do not have a creative bone in my body. I beg to differ. I believe there are things in our society, our upbringing, and our various different cultures that either nurture the creative spirit, ignore it, or block it. Traumas of different sorts can also block it. Beliefs in some families that is fr that it is frivolous time spent can also become a mental block. That doesn't mean it's not there buried somewhere under the pile of conflicts and memories and difficult emotions. It's there, even if you've never brought it out before. I believe that the process of doing so is extremely healing. It has been for me, and I've seen amazing transformations in students of mine in the past who fully embraced an art form of their choosing with their own emotional toolbox Keep in mind, this is not necessarily about whether you are a talented performer or love to boogie at a club or sing in the shower or none of the above. It is about what using your emotional creative nature can do for your overall healthy frame of mind, your healing, and your enjoyment of life. Okay, to continue with a little more of my story to make more sense out of this, prior to the car incident, I had just left the dance studio there in Tulsa. I was a soloist with the original Tulsa Civic Ballet before it became a professional dance company from the age of 13 throughout high school. At 15, I was diagnosed with idiopathic scoliosis, which began to result in way too many injuries. It's significant that we were training on a cement floor, which made it far worse. I was also a scholarship student, one of only 10 out of hundreds of young girls across the country with a Ford Foundation grant that subsidized my entire dance training throughout high school, both in Tulsa and in New York City. And now, as that, as well as spending my life doing the only thing I truly loved was in question. But I was the one who was determined beyond measure to overcome the impossible and dance professionally, spinal problems and injuries or not. I didn't give up under the pressure. Three years and many performances later on that day of the thankfully self-thwarted near suicide attempt, I had been sitting watching rehearsal at the studio with an injury as my understudies took over my roles in the upcoming ballet, The Nutcracker. A world famous ballerina, Violette Verdi, who had been one of my personal mentors and the one who awarded me my four years long scholarship, was there rehearsing her lead role as the Sugar Pump Fairy to which I had been scheduled to dance the supporting role of the Snow Queen in Act One of the ballet. But I became badly injured with two hairline fractured shins and chronic tendonitis in my Achilles tendon. So I lost the opportunity. I was devastated. That day, first seeing my boyfriend, the one person who loved and believed in me no matter what, dancing with my understudy, then seeing Violette there rehearsing reminded me of what I was missing out on. I was failing at the one thing I loved, to dance, and the one thing everyone and everything in my life seemed destined to keep me from doing, both then and forever. Significantly, there was no end to the snickering and bullyish kind of comments from the young dancers who would benefit by my absence. There was my teacher, director, also a second mom to me, who was working hard to get me to give up and say goodbye to dance for good, for her own negative reasons, as she later confessed. Then at home, I had more discontent to look forward to with an angry father who did not want me to be a dancer, period, having nothing to do with my back or injuries. I felt alone 
and felt that my whole world was against me. It kind of was from my perspective at that time. My response at that moment as I drove down that road was that I felt so hopeless I might as well make it all come to an end. My reason for starting this podcast in the first place? What did I do to change it all? And what can you do if you have similar feelings? I did indeed go on to dance professionally through injury, spinal disability, and highly toxic environments in the dance world. And I must say that I went through many deep valleys and yet phenomenal rises at times to the mountaintops, so to speak, in the years that followed that incident. But I had a whole professional career in ballet and retirement before I even began to truly get a handle on it and start to climb out of all the pain of my younger years. I taught my ways to my dance students and others. I taught them all to meditate in order to go deeper within safely. I taught them to visualize, but I've also taught these things to people with no creative artistic leanings whatsoever. It is just plain healing. The creative force in human beings is strong and it is a deeply integral part of what makes us human. To have emotion and have pain and struggle or grief or joy is to have a need to express it. Holding it in can make us sick. Expressing it can transform the experience so we no longer need to suffer from it and give it meaning and give us the strength to keep moving forward, to keep living, to give from our experiences to others. That is the greatest part of the human condition and it comes often from the deepest pains. Creativity is expressed in art, heals and transforms. I want to share what I've learned, the tools that I used to get there, the stories and the people. If it can help even one person, I'm happy.